I'm not nearly as forgiving towards season 5 as I am with 4. I feel like the new crew should have gotten their groove together by this point, but Spongebob is still only getting worse. I don't feel like they were attempting as hard with the writing or comedy this time around, but rather just playing with the format and tone. It gave off a going through the motions vibe, but hey, there are a couple good episodes that took advantage of these changes. Although not as good as season 1 to 4's highlights most of the time, it's still entertaining. So with all that out of the way, just know that I'm not as big a fan of the fifth season as others. Quite a shame too, because it's my birthday. I'm Employee Million, and this is my top 5 best and worst Spongebob Season 5 episodes. The number 5 worst episode is A Flea in Her Dome. Sandy accidentally brings a flea home from Texas, and it causes trouble for her and her friends. That's all there is to this story, and sure simple stories can be effective, but the jokes here are gross and uninspired. A lot of it's just the characters itching, which you can only make so many animations and jokes out of, and the fleas are outright hideous. Why are the close-ups this scary, and why does the story make no sense? The fleas multiplying and the characters fighting just make for unnecessary drama that pads the episode out and that ending's a brain teaser. How does a tree dome that's 10 cubic feet at most drain the entire ocean? Sure you can make the same criticism with reef lower, but that was a joke, not a resolution used to close out the story. Number 4, Waiting. Spongebob's one of my favourite fictional characters, period, but I cannot stand him here. All he does is wait for a toy in the mail, and the only conflict that arises is him getting stressed out from waiting. That's a boatload of him yelling and crying, which gets insanely irritating to listen to non-stop in his post-movie pitch. Also, given how much effort Spongebob puts into waiting here, it's anticlimactic that the toy upsets him and Patrick. At least with Atlanta Square Panthers, you can understand its willingness to try different things, despite also being pretty boring. Waiting's just a 7 minute test of patience, but at least it is an 11 minute one. Number 3, To Love a Patty. If you want a laundry list of everything wrong with season 5 in the next few ahead, just watch this episode. Spongebob falling in love with a Krabby Patty is but a single joke, and it works for the first two minutes. It feels like Spongebob's office rocker throughout the episode, getting romantically invested in a burger. Sure he's dense, especially here, but after all the controversy surrounding his love life a few years prior, this is just about the worst way to give the character a girlfriend. Not to mention, its visuals are horrendous at the end. Patty doesn't need four gross out close-ups just to show that burgers don't last more than a day, and Spongebob doesn't need to eat her to complete their relationship, which sounds wrong on different levels. Number two, had no pay. The shorts were a blessing and a curse to season five, but this is a fundamentally poorly made episode. The setup of Patrick eating Krabby Patties and lying about having the money for them gets the episode off to a bad start, but this setup is a minute and a half out of four, or 40% of the running time. The rest is Patrick trying other jobs and failing them, not because he's dim like a big pink loser, but because he's ignorant and destructive. Each misadventure's over before it starts, and the episode ends so abruptly, Fungus Among Us. This has all the problems that hindered to love a patty, but placed in a story that's just poorly written, and as a consequence, not immersive. It's a run-of-the-mill gross out episode without being gross, just confusing. What's the ick that starts to infect Bikini Bottom? Why does its texture change just to cause more trouble? How come Gary can clean it up and only him, and how did he break out of his quarantine? Why can't Squidward look two feet in front of himself as the Krusty Krab gets infected? Although episodes like The Splinter are harder to watch, Fungus Among Us just feels lazy with everything it does. You can watch those super broken episodes and understand why they're frustrating or bad, but this one just sucks the life out of you. It's well and truly terrible by season 5 standards. For me at least, season 5 is the first time the good's outweighed by the bad and mediocre. There still is some good to come from this season though, and although not the show's A material, these 5 episodes give me insight as to why this is somehow a popular season. Number 5, Friend or Foe. This premiere has some high expectations to live up to, being considered one of the best of the whole series, and while I wouldn't go that far, I still thoroughly enjoy it. Giving us a backstory for Mr. Krabs and Plankton's rivalry was a good idea, and I like all the differences to their life and their youth and how they were shaped by the fast food business. For instance, Mr. Krabs used to be poor, being excited over a single penny on the boardwalk, and saw the fat loot that could be made making burgers. It's dramatic, but it's also got some entertaining jokes. I know liking the drama is an odd compliment to Spongebob, but as you watch the show lose more of its soul, you come to lie spec the heart these sorts of episodes have. As for some criticisms, however, Karen's role to play makes no sense, and the Patrick segments are skippable.
Number four, Spy Buddies. The series was bound to make a spy episode at some point, and they picked a theme and plot that fit the show without problem. Mr. Krabs sends SpongeBob and Undesirable on a hunt to see what Plankton's next scheme is going to be. And all the bases of a spy story are covered, the crazy gadgets, breaking into buildings, disguises, explosions, even a James Bond gun peril parody. You know SpongeBob's in its element when it's comfortable making a pop culture reference. It does this all while having the show's typical childlike sense of humour, but I'll give praise to how the genre doesn't overshadow the jokes or vice versa. Even the toilet humour is cool. Not particularly clever, but it integrates well into the overall package. Number 3, Spongebob vs the Paddy Cadget. Not gonna rhyme this one, sorry. When the season 5 shorts were good, they were downright fantastic. Some of the best quick morsels you can get from the show. Making this one a pirate poem, likely spoken by Patchy, gives the episode a hook that makes it more memorable. The story itself is one of those simple yet effective ones. Spongebob facing off against a machine made to ruin his job is a good reason for him to fight, and the story has the right amount of escalation and payoff. Number 2, Roller Cowards. Roller coasters are a polarizing attraction at any theme park. Either they bring out your adrenaline or your tears. SpongeBob and Patrick are both secretly afraid of going on the new Glove World ride, the Fiery Fist of Pain, but don't want to let each other down. It's rather interesting seeing both of them deal with the problem in their own ways, but have the episode come back to them being friends and on the same level with scary rides. Perhaps my favorite thing about Roller Cowards, however, is that most of it is just the two walking around Glove World and introducing us to what the place is like. It's quite frankly the most Love World centered episode of the show, and I, among others, crave Bikini Bottom's definition of fun in these seasons. Number one, The Krusty Plate. This is another bona fide countdown breaker. It kinda hurts that the best episode this time around is a four minute short, but it's just endless fun. SpongeBob must fulfill his Krusty Krab duties and clean up a dirty stain on a plate in a society where most fast food joints use trays. Like with the Paddy Gadget, this short specializes in escalation. Who in their right mind would use a war cannon and a reality bending laser on a speck of food? Only SpongeBob SquarePants. The setup, the jokes, and the speed of this short are near perfection, and we don't get anything nearly as good on the show again for almost a decade. In the end, there are many reasons to like and dislike Season 5. On one hand it's creative, on the other it's experimental. I can't be too mad at it for being the first major testing ground for what to add to Spongebob. After all, we get stuff like Spy Buddies and Roller Cowards with that sort of risk. But what they choose to do with the show is far from what contemporary fans see was the right direction. So soon I'll get to covering Season 6, one of the most hated of the show's 19 year run. Goodbye for now.